What's up, everybody? How's it going? Here we are. Doing this thing again. Or trying to, at least. Last time didn't go so hot. So, hello. I'm John. And today we are going to be painting some cloakers. Uh, if you don't know, uh, cloaker is... It's kind of like if a... Stingray or a like man some sort of ray some stingray. It's a stingray. Okay a Cloaker is a stingray that is on uh, Land it's on land. It's down in caves and caverns. It's very popular in the underdark and It is called a cloaker because it can hide very easily the idea of it is supposed to be that the outside of its wings have this very dark shape to them, uh, shape, shade to them, and it is supposed to help it camouflage. The inside, however, is a bit lighter, uh, typically because everything's on protected areas tend to be a little bit lighter. Um, but what it does is it hides until it wants to make itself known, in which it will then suppose it's supposed to wrap up its prey and suffocate them. All right, you see here that it also has some mandibles to kind of attack with and help itself feed, I guess. Uh, very much like, you know, your uh, spiders and insects, I guess, and stuff like that. However, today I have two different types of cloakers here. I have this one, which is a very traditional and more original style of cloaker. It is from Nulzers. I hope I'm saying that right. And um, you see it has these much longer mandibles. They almost look like, if we can kind of get in a little bit, they almost look like hands holding like blades. Like it almost looks like you can see knuckles. Uh, and then uh, you see it's much bigger. And then its counterpart here is actually the Loot Studio Cloaker. Now, this Loot Studio Cloaker, uh, I printed myself and I primed it. I primed it with a black primer to help really fit in the shading. And this one already comes pre-primed from when I bought it whew, probably years ago. But uh, the differences here that you can kind of see are the size of it, the thinness of the cloak itself, the wings, and then honestly the tail area. Where you can see this tail is up and it's kind of in this downward motion right it looks like it's diving inward towards its prey this one uh is mid-air it comes with the translucent um support to it to give it that in-flight look this one has a look like it's hovering however a very crafty build uh from loot studio is that it is actually attaching itself to this little brick wall that's falling apart and that is this section right here so it's gluing or it's pretty much holding itself in place to give it this floating intimidating look to it right either way uh they are supposed to be flyers um and i kind of wanted to print both of them well i bought the Nulzer's version of it way back before I even had a 3d printer but then when I saw these options I I love the detail in these creatures they have like you can see the spine area right here I'm still not even sure exactly how I want to paint this um, but I think it looks awesome um, and you see the spine goes all the way down to like it almost like detaches from the skin here and I've been thinking very heavily on like how I want to paint this you see it's a rib cage you can see it's rib cage very well and it's just man I think these guys look freaking awesome so with that uh oh it won't be staying in here for long Oh, well. Wow. 
that's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It won't stay in there. That's unfortunate. I think they look really cool when they're in their pose. Um, anyways, with that being said, we'll go ahead and I guess set this base back up over here. Um, I love the bases that Loot Studio creates. Um, yeah, yeah, I keep, I keep, uh, I keep giving them all this praise. Um, but the bases themselves have like these different looks to them. And I am just such a fan of how much detail they get. Like you can sit here and look at this guy and you'll find little, little extra details. You have this, this kind of brick wall look to it on this like, on this stone. You can see there's some dirt. If you flip it to the other side, there's the remains of a skeleton right here. And if you look very closely, it's hard to see it. That's a good angle though. This is supposedly, this looks like almost key rings or something. So you have no idea really what this means. Maybe, well, looking closer, you can see, uh, like this is probably a piece of some prison that broke apart. Um, interesting. I had no idea. Uh, I looked at this mini and I glanced at the base and I said, oh, cool. I'll just kind of give this like a dark coloration to it because we're in the underdark, right? Now the Nolzers mini, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool. I think it's fantastic. Uh, the base is here to be a base. It's here to give it kind of just a foundation. So there's not going to be as much detail to it. I'll still see what I can do exactly, but it definitely will not have this detail to it that the base has for the Loot Studio Mini. That being said, uh, what I want to do with these, I already mentioned with this guy that I want to give it like this darker coloration. This is the Underdark. My party has reached the Underdark. This is it. I want it to look like the Underdark. I want it to feel like the Underdark. I want it to be mysterious. I want it to be confusing. I want it to be scary. Um, but most of all, like I want it to feel like a dark place. The Underdark is a place where very little light gets through. If you do not have dark vision, you're walking around in complete, just, just a, you're walking around with your eyes closed. You can't see anything. So I have a couple of uh, different foundations here for it. Um, what I want to do is I really want to use, um, where is it? Here they are. I kind of want to use this desert yellow for anything kind of on the inside. Like you can see where there should be like some gravel here. And then for these hard stone spots, I really want to, I'm gonna use this dark stone and then I'm gonna brush over it with this castle gray. This castle, this castle gray though is gonna get a little bit more usage out of it actually. And it's gonna go on all of these little blocks right here, these stone blocks. But it kind of looks like a, like a little bit of a brick house. So to go further with it, I'm going to hit on it with a couple of different colors to give it like a uh, kind of awkward build feel. This is some sort of prison. It doesn't have to be a perfect prison, you know. However, if I don't like this desert yellow, then I'm just going to go over it with a basic brown. And I think that will look pretty solid. I'll be doing the same thing with the other Loot Studio cloak Cloaker. And we should see a pretty decent base. After that, we can go over it with this black wash. And it ought to look pretty decent. Pretty solid, I think. As for the monsters themselves, what I plan on doing is I plan on doing two different things. With, I'm going to make this guy look a bit different than the other two, is my goal here. So I'm actually going to go under his base with... Uh, he's already got, oh, well, I'll probably keep this. So I told you that the underside is going to get light, is going to be lighter. Uh, and what I want to do is I'm going to probably go under it, go through the under base, under the, what am I saying? I'm going to go through the underside of the miniature with this white, and then I'm going to mix this fair skin color and the zombie flesh up. So it gives it kind of a sickly green, but like 
uh, like a sickly skinnish green coloration to it is my goal. Uh, I don't want it to look like a human skin color, but I don't want it to look like a undead. I don't want there to be this mixture of unknown on what this creature is. And that'll also go with the space area. Now, for this guy is where it gets interesting. So what is probably going to end up happening uh, is his base, his underside will have a very light coloration to it because the outside is going to be a purplish dark blue color. I want it to kind of blend in with its environment to, the, to an extent. Um, but the bone is so much more exposed on these guys. So it'd be really easy to just do this like skeleton bone color, right? That the D&D uh, &D paints have. But I don't want it to be just that easy. I want it to feel like something. So what I'm actually going to do is I just got this red from the war paints. And I think I'm going to paint over the bone with that. And then I will probably go over it with this gelatinous blue, which is like a very, very light blue. It's almost white. It comes off as like, it's very good for like snow textures and stuff. But what I wanted to do is just barely kind of hide the the red, that crusted sore color, whatever this, whatever this was. Yeah, crusted sore. And I'm hoping that that will give off like a very thin amount of skin look to it. If it all else fails, I'll go with this skeleton bone, but I'm trying to avoid it as much as I can. Alright, so, that's the goal. Um, once we get to this top, it's gonna go, I'm gonna go over it with this alien purple, and I'll go over it with the underdark, uh, this indigo color. Um, and I think that'll give it a good deep blue coloration. I think the purple underneath will accent it better so that it kind of, it, it feels darker than what the blue actually has. And for me, most importantly is getting these eyes correct. So I think these eyes can have a very serious effect. And I want them, I want them to stand out. I, like everything else about this creature is dark you look at it and you look at it from above you cannot see it but those piercing eyes I when the players run into these creatures I want it to be that you can't see anything in the dark you know until you realize that there's piercing orange eyes looking back at you and I have two colors that might be able to do that for me here I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use but we have this fire new orange from D&D and we have a Phoenix Flames from War Painter. And I think these will be really good, just bright colorations that'll stand out against the outside of this miniature extremely well. I'll be doing the same coloration for this one's eyes. And I'm, what I'm hoping is it just catches it. And that'll like, like it'll really catch that description of like a piercing veil, you know? But that's enough of my rambling. I've already been doing this for what, like, I don't know, like 15 minutes. Oh my God. I'm sorry you had to listen to me for so long. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to get these bases painted so that I can finally glue these guys on. Uh, as before, I'm going to start painting the tails so that I can get them glued. Or I might not actually. I might just wait to uh, glue them at the very end. We'll see. This is my first time messing with larger miniatures like this. This is exciting. Alright, let's get going.
pretty much the bases are very near being done. Uh, but we'll talk real fast about looking at the detail of this side of the base. You see there's these two little dead guys right here. Uh, and they've turned to skeletons, so they've been there for a long time. You see that there's the key right here in front of them, which doesn't really make that much sense to me. I feel like it was just kind of put there. Um, and you can also see right here where they were chained to it. But you don't see any chain around, so that's kind of deteriorated, gone away. However, what we're going to do is we're going to be very careful about this. We're going to use our skeleton bone, it's finally going to get used. And what we're going to do is I'm going to paint these breastplates two different color metals. And it'll be the most subtle thing, but I've realized while I was painting this, just uh, just at, in this moment, that that will help me differentiate between these miniatures. So if I ever have them both out in combat, uh, I'll be able to... Look down at that, notice, hey, this one's silver, this one's like a dark metal, or maybe I'll make it gold, that'll be a little bit more obvious. Um, and I'm afraid that maybe my players will try to investigate that. But, I'll be able to use this as a opportunity to say like, okay, you attack this one, and I know that the one with the silver breastplate is cloaker number one, you know? So, uh... I'm going to be extremely careful trying to get this very thin bone. You might not even be able to see. You can kind of see it. You can really see where it indents out. I'm going to be very careful trying to get that bone painted and not hitting the, the floor below it. But then after that, I'm going to shade this bad boy. Um, I was going to paint these brick walls different colors. Uh, not different colors, but like little little different bricks were going to be placed in it to give it a uh, variation kind of feel to it but seeing it as it is now I think by just throwing the shading on it and throwing that little bit of silver on this edge piece will kind of already highlight enough in what's already what's what's ever what's <laughs> with what's going on with the rest of the miniature these this brown this this desert yellow isn't exactly giving the effect that I want, but it's not not giving the effect. So I'm a little bit confused about whether I like it or not. I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep it and say that's that. Um, because at the end of the day, these are miniatures that are not going to be used all the time. And if that somehow becomes the shining feature of this miniature, then that means I've done a terrible job with it. As for this bad boy... Um, the Nolzer miniatures usually keep their base pretty simple, so I tried to give this a, uh, a very grained texture to it. Um, I highlighted over it with that castle gray, and I think that gives it a good rock form formation look. Um, but I wanted to use a similar coloration so that you could kind of tell, like, this doesn't necessarily look like it's in a dark cavern like these guys do a little bit but it does still kind of give the vibe off that you are in a cave and that's i think that's that's gonna be good enough
Hey guys, I'm back. I'm uh, so I just got through the wash as you guys saw, and I'm letting it dry. And I'm really just spending a lot of time thinking about these guys, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want with them. And I realized that I'm actually a really big fan of that dark stone, and I'm wondering. I might use that dark stone as the bone. In fact, the more I say it, the more I actually really like it. So there's a gamble that's probably about to happen here. And what that gamble is, uh, is I want to make the underside of the wings a very light color and the overside the outside of it a very dark color uh, to give it that contrast kind of give it that uh, sting ray that ocean life kind of vibe even though it's out in uh, it's in caves and stuff it's not it's not in the water but what I want what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this dark stone instead of where was it instead of like using anything else to be able to contrast, I think that would look really cool on this rib cage. The only problem is it won't really contrast with this. This has layers all the way through, so I think it's going to keep that dark blue nightshade kind of color on top. Sorry, I'm pretty close to the camera. It's going to keep that dark, this dark coloration on top, and it's going to keep a light coloration on the bottom the whole way through is what I'm ultimately going to do with it. There might be, I think right here is a good line of where I'm going to make the rest of it blue. But from this point on, I'm going to give it that white coloration. It'll give these guys a little bit of a uh, dispersal, uh, a change, a uh, separation, so that you can kind of tell them apart better, even though they're gigantic difference in looks already but I really think there's a support I forgot to take out, take out of his mouth to do the same for the other guy I got it for the other one huh um 
Where is it? Oh, here it is. Sorry, this sounds awful. There we go. Anyways. Hmm. Anyways, uh, what I want to do is I think the dark stone on this like very light coloration is going to look amazing. I think it's going to be a very good flex on it that'll really give it that, uh, that pop on these guys. I think it'll also accentuate the weapon some. And that's what I'm going for at the end of the day. I want I want this tail to look terrifying. So while these uh while these shades are painting, or while these shades are painting, while these shades are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the tails of these guys so that I can actually glue them to the base and continue painting them in whole. Alright. Exciting stuff.
I'm still going to keep them unattached from the base for now, uh, because with these guys only being glued and attached at this one singular spot, I'm a little bit nervous to try to paint too much and fear that it will come off of the adhesive and fall on the ground and break. So for right now, I think I'm going to continue, uh, continue painting it by hand without uh, without attaching it to this base so I have a place to hold on to it. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna start with these, uh, the inside of the wings, and I will paint over this rib cage area at first because I want to go over it with that dark stone later rather than sooner. Uh, as a general rule of thumb for anything that you paint, you always want to do the hardest to reach locations first. And I think the hardest to reach locations are going to be this inner area. I'll probably, I'll probably hit the mouths a little bit and then I will paint the inside of the wings. After that, I will go to this top side, I'll paint the outside of the wings and then I'll come back and I'll touch across this, uh, this bone area. The face is where it gets interesting because I'm trying to figure out exactly what coloration I want to use. I think I think what I'll end up doing is this top portion will come off as the same color as that bone but then the rest of it is going to mirror the wings the chin area with these mandibles are gonna have this like lighter coloration while the top of it with the eyes or not the eyes but the top of its head is going to have that darker coloration 
and then we'll add in that yellow to kind of give off a good contrast between the dark of the head and the eyes right beside it. But I probably will not glue these guys on until I get very close to finishing it. So with that, I guess let's start painting the bottom of these wings. One more thing to note with this. This is where the miniatures are really going to uh, differentiate in color. These, almost touched it. These Loot Studio miniatures are going to get a layer of white. And then I'm going to go over them with this, this very faint blue coloration. While this guy, the Nolzer's Mini, is going to get the same white but then he's going to get a mixture of this green and this peach color to give it a little bit more of a lifelike tone since it's a bulkier one.
We're calling an audible on this one. Um, the thing is, I just tried to get the first stroke in with this gelatinous blue. And the problem is, is it doesn't really, you can't, eat, like, we'll throw it in the shade, in the light. Either way, you can't see a difference. And I knew it was going to be close. I didn't think it was going to be that strong. I didn't, or I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be a very small detail to it. That it was just going to be a very faint blue. But it doesn't really feel that way. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the audible and I'm going to go with this darker blue, this ethereal blue. I use it on Cav. And it had a light effect to it, but not a deep effect to it so I'm hoping that this doesn't just turn out because side by side these look almost identical this one has a little bit more of a hazier color to it where this one feels a lot fuller but I'm really hoping that I don't just get a blue cape out of this effect we'll see what happens I'm hoping that the key difference for this is going to be that the bottom of the wings are going to be over a white coloration where the top of the wings the blue is going to be over a dark coloration and if so that'll be a cool little experiment but that is the issue that we're running into as for this guy i'm honestly surprised if you if you look up a picture of the coker the 5e 
cloaker in the monster manual. This is actually surprisingly close to the coloration of the miniature. Like, I think it nails the face almost spot on. And like, I didn't hit a lot of the teeth. So like, if I wanted to, I could not paint the teeth, really. In fact, the more I talk about it, the more that actually sounds like a good idea. Because I'll give it this, I would just give it this like, skeleton bone coloration. And that would make it blend with the face a little bit too much. So I might have accidentally saved myself a little bit of time there. Alright. Anyways. Let's see if this ethereal blue can give me anything else. So, you're about to see me try it.
All right, strangely enough, ended up being a mixture of the two that was the solution. So you can see what I did was uh, I poured a couple of them together and uh, I poured the, uh, which one were they? I poured that light blue and that ethereal blue together, mixed them, and that's what this result ultimately ended up being. However, this one, I tried it with the deeper blue first just to see how it turned out. What I ended up having to do was go over it with a uh, <clears throat> go over it with a white to kind of dim the effect on it, which had very similar feeling to this. I guess I could probably pull them out of directly out of light so they're not reflecting so much. So it's kind of giving off this texture that is primarily white, which is what I want. I want it to be this light under color, but there are hints and pushing through a blue, like this is trying to pull out of it. <sighs> it's been a long paint. We're three and a half hours in. We're finally going to hit the top. And then after that, we can give this bad boy, well, we'll go over the uh, skeletal structure with this dark stone after that. But this guy will be pretty much done. And these guys will be well on their way.
Okay, it's 11 o'clock and I've been doing this for four hours now, but I'm doing all right, you know?
ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Lady or gentlemen. I gotta call it a night, unfortunately. Uh, we will come back to these. We will get them finished. And they're pretty close, honestly. Uh, I just, I can't keep going for four and a half hours now. With where we're at, we've got the majority of this boy painted. You could call them done if we really wanted to, but there's other things we want to do. And then of course, I really didn't want to touch up these guys. So, at this point, what we do when we get back to this probably tomorrow is we go over it with this indigo color we go over the purple area that we just painted same thing with here we kind of brush over the purple area that we just painted and that ought to give it a nice dark blue coloration to it and that's the color that we're going for after that we smack on the uh this spine area we go back to that dark stone and then really you know after that, I think we can throw on a wash. And the only thing I want to do from that point on is I want to use this skeleton bone and I want to dry brush it onto the dark stone to kind of give this wear and tear feeling to the tail that they have. But with that, you have the eyes and then you wash it, or well, it's already washed. You throw the varnish on it and it's done. But, that's probably, I'm going to say that's another hour's worth of work, and it is almost midnight where I'm at. i got to get up in four hours to go in and do a full-time job. So, we'll have a part two of the cloakers where we'll finally get to finish it and see the end of it. So far, I think they look pretty good. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Of course, if you have any interest in uh, your own custom minis, feel free to reach out to us, either through the socials on the bottom left, or you can just reach out to us on the channel uh, through the comments section, whatever, we'll, we'll get in touch with you. But we can discuss making you know something through Hero Forge, something through um, Eldritch Foundry, some other type of uh, custom miniature creator. Uh, I'd love to do work with you. Alright. Like, subscribe, comment if you enjoyed. 